Yeah, welcome to another session of the grammatical theory lecture. Today we will dealing with three adjoining grammar. That is a, a schedule so far. Um, we had an introduction of basic terms, uh, an introduction to phrase structure grammar and expert theory, government and binding, generalized phrase structure grammar, feature description, feature structures and models, lexical functional grammar, categorical grammar, and head-driven phrase structure grammar. And uh, today we will be dealing with tree and joint grammar, or tag for short. Um, the reading material is again the grammar theory textbook, um, the sections 12.1 to 12.5. There are many variants of tag and um, there are some of them discussed uh, in the book that will not be covered here. And there's also some additional general uh, discussion that is not covered here in this uh, session. The semantics is again skipped, but if you want to know how to relate um, the syntactic structures to semantics, um, you may read that. It, th that's interesting because the um, the tree structures that are derived are not necessarily, so there are special special things to know about semantics and tag. Um, I don't want to go into it uh, in much detail, but you, you can check it there. Okay, so tag was developed by Aravind Yoshi um, um, at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, it's interesting because uh, its computational complexity seems to be exactly what we need for human grammars, for human languages. Um, so we saw that problem uh, with GPSG. GPSG tried to be very, or they, they were very restrictive. And uh, as it turned out, they were too restrictive. So they had um, uh, context-free a context-free grammar, uh, which is okay for English, but uh, it was not sufficient for uh, Swiss German and uh, other languages that need more uh, complexity in, in the descriptions. So tag seems to be able to do exactly what we need. And some people think it's important. I personally, I don't think it's important. Uh, it's the grammars that matter, but um, yeah, as I said, and also in the introduction to government and binding, um, restrictiveness in, in terms of computational complexity was a driving force in theory development in um, earlier decades. The hotspots where uh, tag is done today uh, is Paris, uh, by Anne Avelier. She also works in, in HPSG, I think more in HPSG than in TAG, but she ha has a book on, on TAG grammars and um, did some interesting articles. Um, <clears throat> the, the Columbia University in the US has uh, Owen Rambo, who also works on German, and um, an Düsseldorf, there is Laura Kallmeier and her group with Tim Lichte and Rainer Oswald and so on. Um, okay, the important publications or the, the ones I, I chose to cite here um, are from Yoshi, Levi and Takahashi from 75, Yoshi and Yoshi and Chavez. So there, um, there are lots and lots of papers about different formal, different um, extensions of the formalism and uh, about the computational complexity we get from that. So rather theoretical and formal stuff, but there are some uh, papers dealing with the linguistic uh, side of tag and I cited those. Yeah, on German, there's the work by Owen Rambo and uh, uh, colleagues, and also by Tim, um, Kim, not, not Tim, Kim Gerdes. Uh, it's in French, unfortunately. So if you don't speak French, then it's not of much 
value, but um, there is it's a bigger work on German. Okay, the outline of that session of this session today. Um, uh, first, we have some general remarks on the representational format, the basic mechanisms. Then we deal with local reordering, also known as scrambling, verb position, passive, long distance dependencies. And then I want to talk about some versions of tag to give you an idea what uh, else is possible. And then I will uh, draw some conclusions and make some general remarks. Okay, so the basic idea of tag is very simple. Every head ha is paired with a tree in which the head can appear. So that's lexical tree adjoining grammar. And um, these trees can be combined with other trees into more complex trees. And there are two operations, um, substitution and adjunction. I want to show you um, the, the elementar elementary trees first. So this is uh, a tree for an NP, that would be a VP tree, uh, and this uh, is a tree for an adverb. And what you see here is this um, funny annotation with a downwards arrow and an asterisk. Uh, and this downward arrow means um, that an argument has to be inserted there. And this means that um, the tree can attach to a VP node, take another uh, tree apart and uh, insert the VP node here and then there will be a new VP node here. So let's have a look how that works. That is the, the first operation, substitution. So we have this one node with the arrow and we can insert something else in here. And the result is, uh, well, <laughs> the, the other tree is inserted, right? So it's not spe spectacular. Um, this is maybe a little bit more interesting. The adjunction tree says, okay, I, I am looking for a VP node here. So if this tree has a VP node, we can take the, the tree apart here and uh, insert that thing. And the result will be uh, Jean always laughs. So we uh, took the VP here, right? And inserted this part, these uh, uh, doubled the VP node and um, we are done with adjunction. That's all, <laughs> we can close the session. Um, now we, we have to deal with uh, our phenomenon. Um, so what about local reordering? To remind you of the German facts, um, that's uh, a sentence with a ditransitive verb, weil der Mann dem Kind das Buch gibt. And all six orders of these uh, argument NPs are possible. So you see them here color coded to make it more visible. Uh, all, all six orders are, principle, are, are possible in principle. And the question is how to deal with that. Um, so in, in tag, we have, as I said, we have these lexical items. So they, they come with a little tree attached to it, but there is not just one uh, possibility to realize a, a word. So in many cases, there are several ways to realize it. And um, so people speak about uh, tree families. So every word is uh, coming uh, with a family of trees. And what one could do is that one just assumes six different trees for a diatransitive verb um, uh, uh, for every uh, order, we would have one uh, tree. The trees can be related via lexical rules. So we have the base tree and then derive all other permutations from uh, the base order. And um, this is basically 
this lexical rule-based approach is something that Oskarait uh, suggested in categorical grammar. So one can assume lexical rule there, lexical rules there as well. Um, it's also interesting to note that this would correspond to transformational analyses, right? So we have one tree and uh, build another tree uh, out of it. So here you see that, that the lexical rule based approaches um, really are uh, connected or, or equivalent in some sense to transformational approaches. Except that there is no claim about structure that has to be built first, like complete trees and then uh, do the transformation. Um, but the, the trees can be there, so to say. I mean, the, there can be just six lexical items for a, a verb like give, German version, um, and they are, so to speak, already produced by lexical rules, so there is no psycholinguistic statement about timing and order. They could be derived on the fly as well, so just don't get me wrong. So they, it depends on your, on the psycholinguistically psycholinguistic facts, uh, what you want, right? So the, the theory as such doesn't make any claims uh, on that. Um, okay, the alternative is to uh, assume something like, like uh, the GPHG approach, namely that linearization rules are uh, assumed that are separate from dominance rules. Um, tag goes, a little bit further than GPSG. So they not just um, talk about local trees, like um, uh, in immediate dominance and linear precedence uh, grammars, EDLP grammars, right? That was the, the buzzword uh, for, for GPSG and HPSG, but they um, talk about local domains. So what they can do uh, with, with their formalization is that they can permutate all these uh, leaf nodes in this tree. So, but let's, let's look at the, at the first example uh, with this set of linearization uh, statements. So the, the nodes in a tree, uh, in a tag tree, all have a certain address, right? So you, they start with zero, that's the, the level, um, then uh, they give all these nodes a number and um, on, on the second level and then on the third level, um, they have like a prefix uh, uh, saying, oh, well, that's uh, actually the, the second level. So they, they say, okay, that's uh, second and then the first node and second and the second node. So they give these nodes and trees numbers and then they have a linearization set uh, containing linearization statements that would be the linear pre precedence rules for alpha. And they say that one precedes two, so that NP precedes the VP, and that 2.1, this one here, precedes 2.2. So that's basically what we see, right? The, the statements make that order fixed. And this is what you want for English. So the, the order of the elements is li like the order you see in the tree. But the funny thing is, or the, the interesting thing is, uh, what you get if you have no linearization constraints at all. So this case is uh, given here in 222. Um, the set of linearization constraints is empty and that means that these two nodes can appear in any order and these two nodes as well. And uh, even this thing can appear in front of this. So I, I marked the, um, the linearization possibilities that may look strange to us uh, in red. So the NP2, um, that would be this one, can appear uh, in front of the verb, so to, here to the left, and the NP1 follow, or NP2 
can precede NP1, so that would be here, or NP1 can appear between verb and NP2. So this NP can be serialized here in, in between these two. And with such a setting, you could have um, the, the German uh, orders, right? So um, it's just like, like a flat VP rule in Oskarite's GPSG analysis. Um, Okay, um, what you don't get with this uh, setting is certain um, cases where the arguments of several verbs are um, uh, permutated. So that uh, so I'm I'm discussing verbal complexes now. That's not quite fair. You might may think because I didn't discuss it in other uh, series. But um, this is sort of important because the, the result of this discussion is a extension of the formal underpinnings of the framework. So we have to discuss it because we need that uh, for, for grammars of German. Okay, so what is the problem? So, uh, German is one of these uh, languages like, like Swiss German or uh, uh, Dutch, where you have, uh, or Japan and Korean has a two and Persian, where you have uh, verbal complexes. It's usually the case with, or if it happens, it's a case with um, SOV languages. So where the verbs are at the end and uh, what you can do is that you cluster these verbs so they are in, in one place and the arguments of um, the verb are, the verbs are scrambled. So it's as if that uh, cluster of verbs behaves like one simplex verb. So basically like given, yeah, you have all the three arguments of the verbs involved in the complex and they can be scrambled around. So example, uh, weil es ihr jemand zu lesen versprochen hat. So the S, it belongs to read, to lesen. Uh, ihr belongs to versprochen and uh, jemand belongs to hat. So it agrees with this, but it, it's an argument of versprochen. It depends on how you analyze the uh, auxiliary verb. Okay, so the, the Problem is that tag uh, in a setting we, we just saw cannot analyze cases where uh, like this, where the S appears between the arguments of uh, the upstairs verb. I will show you how to analyze some of these permutations. That's surprising that it works at all. Uh, it's interesting, but um, there are certain configurations that cannot be analyzed and we need an extension of the formalism for that. Um, okay, so the, the extension is called multi-component tag and the, the authors who invented that um, used the examples in 226 uh, for this argument or for, for motivating the, the extension. Um, dass der Detektiv dem Klienten den Verdächtigen des Verbrechens zu überführen versprach. That's the, well, normal sentence. It's very complex, but, but you need that kind of complex example to, to make the point, right? And you have an embedded verb phrase uh, with a, what is it? Uh, an accusative and a genitive object, um, überführen, right? And then you have a promise, versprechen, that takes a nominative and a dative. And there are certain um, configurations that cannot be analyzed. So here we have uh, the, the genitive fronted, then the nominative, then the accusative of the downstairs word, and then the dative. And that's um, a mix of these arguments. I show you first what 
does work with, with the formal apparatus we have so far. And that's very interesting. So the, um, this would be a, a, a complex tree for zu überführen. So usually you, you would say, okay, you have a verb phrase, a verb, the two uh, NP arguments, and then some, some pro uh, subject. That's people, what people do in, in GB, um, in, in infinitival uh, verb phrases, the subject is not visible and there is some in, empty element that's called pro. Um, now, the interesting thing about this tree is that the uh, tag authors suggest that there's an empty element and that this thing is sort of moved, right? So one, two is the, the first argument of the second verb and it's here. And two, two, the second argument of the second verb is uh, here higher in the tree. So, you see that as some, some tree element that could be used uh, in an analysis. And Überführen uh, comes with lots of these trees, right? So this is one configuration. And um, the interesting thing is that this um, governing verb is sort of, it, it's like an adjunct, right? So it says, I want to have a S node here and plug in somewhere. And then this is the top S node that, that will be inserted into the structure um, or will, will connect to the top, top of the structure where we took the structure apart. Okay, so let's see what we can do with these two things, right? Um, the first way to insert Versprechen, so I, I marked the inserted tree in green, right? So the first way is to insert it here, right on top of the uh, pro uh, part of the tree. And the other black things here also belong to, to the Überführen, right? So these are the moved uh, NPs. One, two went here and two, two went here. So we inserted this NP11 one, one, and NP21 one, uh, below these two, right? So, so that works, something you probably didn't expect. I didn't expect it. But um, so you can do that because you have these trees with some uh, internal uh, movement. And the other thing, so remember here are two NPs uh, of the embedded verb, right? And the higher verb NPs are to the right of it. And if we look at the next uh, slide, we see that the promise tree is inserted one place higher. So before that we had a tier, right? And uh, now, and, and the two NPs to the right. And now we inserted it one uh, step higher and we have NP22, then the uh, upstairs NPs and then NP12, right? And of course we can switch these two around because we can have a different movement here, different kind of movement. Um, so that would be possible, but we would not be able to put something in between here. And um, this is why we need multi-component tag. And uh, this is how it works. So here you see um, that that there are two parts of the tree and there's a dashed line connecting uh, the S nodes. That means um, that this part of the tree somehow has to dominate this part, but um, uh, we don't care what is in the middle, right? So there could be something in between or there isn't, um, no problem. So with this, um, kind of uh, multi-component uh, extension, we can do the following. So the, the green stuff is our promise tree and we have the one one separate uh, from the, the part that contains the one one trace. I, I switch back. So here you see one one 
is a separate treelet, so to say, a separate part of the tree. And here is a, a one one trace. And this is what we get by this, right? So it 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 could be directly adjacent to this, but it can also be uh, on on top of other material. So this is a two two coming from here, belonging to this tree, right? So it's it was here, and we inserted the the Versprach tree um, in the middle of of this black tree, and parts of the Versprechen tree go on top on the very top. So we get the the orders we could derive uh, before. Okay, so that was local reordering with a little bit extension of the formal uh, power. And now we are back on the track again and have a look at our other phenomena, verb position, passive, long distance dependencies and so on. Um, the verb position uh, could be done as in GPSG. So we already saw the uh, local domain uh, linear precedence approach uh, for tag. Um, the, the change in verb position comes with a change in meaning. So in one uh, case we have uh, Verb final sentences that could be assertions. Uh, in the other uh, case, we have uh, verb initial um, sentences that are uh, assertions in main clauses and uh, questions. So it seems to be appropriate to assume a lexical rule based analysis uh, to get the semantics in parallel to the syntax. So then again, we would have uh, different members uh, in the tree family. There would be a tree uh, in initial position and one in final position. The trees are related by lexical rules. So again, that's like the transformations uh, in uh, transformational grammar. Good, that brings us to the next part, passive. Um, again, that's very boring by after everything we learned uh, so far uh, about grammar theories, categorical grammar and HPSG and uh, the, the things we learned today about transformation and, and lexical rules. So um, you probably would expect that the uh, analysis of passive is also an, a lexical one uh, where one has an active tree and a passive tree and they are related by lexical rules. Um, this again corresponds to um, transformation in transformations in government and binding and uh, trees are mapped onto other trees. So that's uh, what you have in uh, tag as well. Now the last thing we uh, have to talk about are long distance dependencies and that's also very easy in tag and it's uh, also interesting. So the, the what you see on the on the left hand side is a special tree for likes. Who that bill likes? Um, where we already inserted uh, a complementizer and a wh word and an np but there is a special tree for this uh, strange order right so wh word complementizer and um, subject and and all of that right so there's a tree for that and um, then there is uh, another tree for uh, that clauses, uh, for, for, sorry, for this uh, did uh, configuration with auxiliary inversion. Um, and this is an, a, a tree that is joined into these uh, kind of sentences. And um, if, if this adjunction 
took place or after this injunction taking place, then we will get this as a result. Uh, who did John tell Sam that Bill likes? Right, so this, this is counterintuitive uh, if you are really used to doing syntax uh, the way we did it so far, but there is this kind of tree that um, is used uh, or combined via a junction to these specialized trees that are just uh, there in the lexicon for fronting constructions. So yeah, here you see that color coded who that Bill likes is the original tree and uh, did John tell Sam um, is uh, a, a, a verb of telling or asking or whatever uh, kind of tree. They all have these kind of trees and they are inserted into the middle of other sentences. Uh, and you can do that um, uh, several times, so as often as you want. Um, so that means that recursion is factored out of the elementary trees. So this is uh, the elementary tree that you need for, for the long distance dependency. So with a who fronted, but it's not um, in the, the, the long distance dependency is not in this tree, right? So it's taken apart. Uh, uh, and you have these uh, verb of telling trees that just are inserted into the middle of uh, other uh, trees. Okay, there is one more thing to talk about. That's the this label here, OR. It uh, doesn't mean open access, um, but uh, obligatory adjunction. So the the tree for wh comp np likes trace is a member of the family, uh, the tree family of likes, and is listed in the lexicon. And the tree has a category S, but it's not a well formed English uh, sentence, right? So, who that bill likes is not English, it's just a fragment of something. And the OR label. Uh, o, o A label uh, means that you have to adjoin something there. If you don't do it, then the, the structure is not well formed. So that's something you also have to know about tag because otherwise it's not complete. You get generate or license ill formed utterances. Um, in the Next part, I will show you something, some extension um, that's feature-based tag. And th that's, well, in, in past years, uh, I didn't teach that, but it's part of, because it's one of the extensions, um, and, but it's part of the book and I want to uh, cover it here in this session today because uh, I think, if you combine what we had before, these feature uh, descriptions, feature structures with uh, what we have so far, then um, you get a nice theory without this um, sort of stipulative obligatory adjunction because it sort of follows from the feature description setting. So I thought I'd show you that as well because it's interesting. Okay, so F tag, feature-based tag, uses AVMs to describe nodes. Um, every node consists of two parts, a top and a bottom one. And the exception to this is substitution nodes. They have just one, uh, one description and um, at the top. And then when you insert something, then, then you uh, get a top and a bottom part. Um, in all these structures that, that you have and that you newly create, the top uh, structure must match, match the, um, the bottom part. And of course, if you insert things um, into uh, substitution nodes, they must, this must match as well. <clears throat> For a junction, the upper structure has to match the upper node into which it is uh, inserted, where the, the adjunct 
action takes place and the lower node must match the lower, lower one. Um, the pairs of AVMs are kept until the end of the derivation and then this, this compatibility check and the unification uh, happens and the, the information has to be uh, compatible. To give you some example, that is uh, John Laughs. We have um, the lexical item for, for Laugh. It consists of top and bottom. Uh, this is just category verb, that's boring. But here we have category VP, category VP, and agreement information, right? This agreement information is also shared here with this side. And here we have two category symbols S. Now, if this John here is inserted, then this top structure has to match this thing. No problem because there is nothing in here. Uh, and then um, once we are done with um, the, the substitution, um, all the top nodes have to match uh, bottom ones. So this, cat s cat s is trivial but here the agro is identified with the one and here we have third singular and this third singular matches this one so everything is fine okay um, now obligatory adjunction can be enforced by stating incompatible features in lexical items so this is the lexical item for laughing and here we says we say um, it's a gerund and um, we want it to be uh, indicative somehow so that's a sort of verb form and um, inflection information and this so this would crash it would be incompatible but um, we can set up our auxiliary uh, lexical item for the auxiliary verb in the way that it selects for a VP node, right, to, to adjoin, and uh, that that has to be compatible with the um, uh, gerund, and um, the the top node has to be compatible with indicative. Um, that's what this lexical item does, and. This is the result of the combination. Um, the, this node is inserted on top of that, right? So we have two compatible nodes here, and this one is inserted below that one. So we have two compatible nodes here. Now, at the end of the derivation, this is uh, identified, and the, um, the agreement information uh, from here is because this is identified is also available here and that element that is inserted into this uh, NP slot has to agree with this uh, auxiliary. Okay, um, yeah, so let's uh, conclude or classify things, say some, some uh, words about the framework. One thing I, I want to say is uh, that idioms can be accounted for really easily in tag. So there's a paper by Anne Abeli and Chavez uh, about idioms um, where they look at take something into account, for example, right? And the, this is just a tree with parts of the tree lexically fixed. So this is takes and this is into account. And you can just state that in, in the phrasal configuration. But um, you have these open slots, right? So it's like a lexical item, like the ones we saw, but that some of the material uh, has lexical specifications. So here we have an NA label that's the opposite of OA. Um, so that means nothing should adjoin here. So otherwise you, you could modify that these uh, uh, parts of the trees which you don't want. So um, this is 
basically what construction grammar always wants to, right? So that they say, okay, it's phrasal configurations. But the point is about um, tag as it was uh, with categorical grammar and HPG as well, that you can take these trees apart. So you can, it's not a fixed configuration. You can take them apart, put adjuncts in between, uh, put other verb forms in between and so on. So that's the, uh, the difference between tag and category grammar and HPSG and the entirely pattern-based uh, uh, construction grammar variants. Um, maybe they are not, um, not that pattern-based, but then they didn't tell us how to do things, how to take configurations apart. And that's something that the other theories uh, did. So a categorical grammar does tell us uh, how to insert adjuncts and uh, tree adjoining grammar does uh, provide this uh, a formal account of that. And again, what I think is uh, what we cap have to capture in terms of language acquisition are dependencies between heads and arguments. And uh, this is the, the stuff that children have to learn, right? Because if you look at coordination data, you see it's really crazy. It's everywhere. You cannot um, fix or uh, certain phrasal patterns um, because in, in coordination structures, the, the patterns are destroyed. Um, so in the end, we all have to deal with dependencies and you can read up in the grammar theory textbook uh, about coordination and tag and uh, category grammar. Uh, that's in, in chapter 21, where you find more on that uh, discussion. Okay, to sum up, uh, L tag is really simple. We have lexically anchored trees. There are two combination operations, a junction and a substitution. And recursion is filtered out of trees. Um, we don't have empty elements in the lexicon, but in the trees. So you saw some, right, where we talked about the verbal complexes, there were empty elements, or and also about non-local uh, dependencies. Um, but this is not a lexical item for an, for an empty element. It's just there, you could also admit it in the tree. It's just syntactic sugar for linguists who want to see trees. If you hate trees, you just, leave them out, right? So, okay. And um, there are various extensions of the core formalism. We saw some of them. Um, there are lots of papers on, on tag. Some versions are also dealt with in the grammar theory textbook. But um, yeah, I think you, you got some idea what uh, could be used for uh, for, for grammars of German and what kind of complexity you need there. So um, this is it. Uh, thank you uh, for taking part in this uh, grammar theory uh, lecture series. That's the end of the official part. So that's the number of uh, sessions one needs to fill a semester. Um, I think I will add some further uh, sessions on, on minimalism and um, dependency grammar and construction grammar if uh, my time allows this or if you demand it. Okay, thank you very much and um, see you uh, in the QA sessions or wherever.